This is Michelle with Creative Operation and Country Craft Creations, and I'm here today to walk through the project that we're going to be making using our Craftology box. Um, the papers this time are What's Cooking, and this is the exclusive line by Tamara from Country Craft Creations, and this is a really awesome retro vintage recipe vibe that you are going to absolutely love. And I created this album as kind of an heirloom piece. I am a total collector of recipes from my family vintage recipes vintage recipe books this is going to be a perfect album to collect all of my favorites keep them and then pass them on to my family this album was meant to hold a bunch of recipes it was also meant to hold a bunch of pictures so pictures of the recipes pictures of you and your family with you know family uh, get-togethers having the meal um it's it's full it's big it's it's awesome you're gonna love it so the actual album let me see um, measures nine and a quarter by nine tall okay it's really it's it's really pretty big and then it has a two and a half inch spine let's double check that yes um two and a half inch spine so it's it's a big album it's gonna hold a lot of recipes so on the front what i did was i um double matted the pattern paper with some of the uh, artisan cardstock that will come in your kit and it is absolutely it, it just totally made the uh, colors pop and on the cover what I did was I actually used the what's cooking uh, wordage from the paper um, from the the cover paper in the collection and that's what I used for the title of this album and then I backed it on some of the cardstock that came with the uh, collection this wooden spoon may be a little bit different in your kit, but you should have a wooden spoon with all these flowers and buttons. And I just laid this down here. I did use a hot glue gun to make the spoon stick. I tied a little bit of this beautiful lacy ribbon with the red, or lace with the red ribbon in it. Um, I tied that around the top of the spoon there, covered it with some flowers, put some of the buttons on here, and it turned out, I think it turned out to be a really cute little cover. I used the lace on the spine as well, so it has that, um, I just love it. It's just a beautiful, beautiful lace with the ribbon in it. The back, um, I did the same thing with the double matting with the artisan cardstock but I left it plain. I didn't put anything else on this. So let's go through the pages and I'll show you what they do. When you open up your album, the first thing you're gonna have is this portfolio and it just uses a tie closure and opens up. I left lots of room again, like I said, for pictures um, and then recipe cards. So in your collection, you will also have four papers of recipe cards that Tamara created. So lots of opportunities to put your cards you can put pictures down in here you can put anything you want and then I adhered some of the um, the papers I fussy cut some of the images out and put those there so you can put your pictures underneath them and they would overlap but that's the first thing that you will see when you open up your book and it will tie like that added um, one of the little pieces that I fussy cut out backed on cardstock and then the flower up here then um, over here, we're gonna have a waterfall and my waterfall is a little bit different because I wanted to make sure that all the recipe cards came out. So what I did with this waterfall was I created belly band pieces so that you could put your recipe cards in there, but you could also take them out to not only write on them, but you could also um, take them out of the book so that you could take the card into the kitchen and not mess up your book in the kitchen. So it has a magnet closure. This is meant to be plain because I wanted to put a picture 
of the recipe or the gathering that I use the recipe in in here. So lots of rooms for photos here. So these are all belly bands. And then back here we have a pocket with more recipe cards in it. Fussy cut out one of the images. And then I had one of these um, old doily uh, die cuts that I used to back it with. Um, and then on the inside here, this is another piece of the images that I fussy cut out and put on there. So turn the page here. Now this page I kind of envisioned you know, your counter with all of your canisters and your bowls and things on it, and then the wallpaper behind. So I created just kind of stepped pockets where your recipe cards could go. And then um, in your kit, you also get this um, silver metallic uh, paper. Now I forget what it's called, I'm sorry, but it will be in your instructions. <laughs> And I got my Cricut Joy out and I cut out utensils. So I have some bowls and things like that. I use the paper because it kind of mimics the kitchen utensils. So I just decorated some recipe cards that I had in my stash and added Tamara's recipe cards as well. Um, right now I have 48 recipe cards in here and there's totally room for more. But there's three pockets here that we're going to create. And they're just step pockets just for the recipe cards. And then over here we're going to have pages with... Um, places for pictures. We have um, a little clip that I just tied some scrap ribbons that I had that I thought matched everything. And then the little charms that come in your kit. This one's a little whisk. I just put that on the clip and it's just holding uh, one of the other cut aparts that I did. Magnet closure here opens up for um, a pocket picture here, recipe here, and then more recipes back here. I did add um, from the scraps that I had left over a photo mat and then I fussy cut one of the pies out and again I envisioned a countertop with the um, with the shelf or the wallpaper excuse me behind so that closes like that and then we'll go ahead and turn the page this one has a belly band and it's just a simple belly band but I did I'll show you how to adhere it down there in the middle so it makes two sections so these don't kind of fly up and down the page they have two separate kind of places for your recipe cards to go in and then um, added one of the flowers that comes in the kit and one of the buttons with some of the black twine there just as a uh, decoration over here another opportunity for a photo another clip with a little mixer charm here and another one of the die cuts that I just kind of slipped under there and then um, this opens up, this is a pocket as well. So pictures here and then recipes here. And uh, again, some of the scraps, I got um, my Cricut Joy out and I found a cute little pot holder and just fussy cut that out to create a pull for the recipe card and then one of Tamara's recipe cards there. Um, just super fun. I love, I love this collection, I just love this collection. So, there's that. Then this opens up, and then you have, again, pockets here, a pocket here, and recipe cards. Now behind these, there's a photo mat for a photo. And here's one of the things I was um, talking about, one of the colanders that I did out of the uh, metal um, looking paper. And so then underneath here, there is uh, another waterfall. And this is left plain intentionally for pictures of lots of recipes. It's adhered on the back on this one because I did do a closure. And I'll talk about this during the tutorial about how you don't even really need a closure for here because the recipes will go here and keep it closed. But if you wanted to add um, the closure to have another element, excuse me, there's a fuzzy on there. Um, I fussy cut this out, backed it with cardstock, and then another one of my lace doilies on that. Then it just closes like this and has a magnet that holds it all together. So turn this page, and I love this paper. This one, I think this is probably, I don't know, this one and this one are probably my favorite prints. I just absolutely adore them. But this opens up, and you have the two flaps, so you have a big pic place for a picture, and then you have a double pocket here, so you have a place for recipes here. I did use some of the um, extra card stock, and I created another photo mat, and then you can put a picture behind this little stove that I fussy cut out. And then, um, again, I fussy cut out here um, these images from the di uh, die cut sheet and backed them on the little um, doily. And then, um, so you have a, a pocket here, and then we also have, whoops, getting caught on my little stove there. Um, then we also have a pocket here that 
has the, the little corners here. So you can tuck your recipes in those little corners like so and have another little spot for your um, recipes. So that will close up and that ties and the tie has a fussy cut piece here backed on cardstock. Then this one here opens up this way and again I used my Cricut Joy and I uh, got some fork knife spoon die cuts and cut those out glued them on and I use some of the black time to kind of tie them together, make a little embellishment. This will open this way and this way and again lots of room for photos and then I'm going to show you how to create these photo corner pockets that will hold your recipe cards. You can take them out but the corners are actually part of the whole, they're not separate, they're part of the thing. So I'll show you how to configure this, how to score it and cut it, and you can make your photo corners this way. So this is a kind of a cool idea, and this could be used for a lot of different things. So um, again, I'll show you that in the tutorial, and then a big pocket back here. We've got a big photo mat opportunity. I cut out this little um, pot here, and then lots more recipe cards here. So you can see this thing holds a ton of recipes, and that'll just tie closed. Back here, I decided that I wanted big pockets to put things, so I made a great big um, pocket here that you could put clippings, um, any recipes that you didn't want to like rewrite, family heirloom type recipes, whatever you wanted to put in there. Nice big magnetized flap um, for it so it'll hold them all securely. And then you have another pocket here that's also an accordion. I did make another clip. I put a pan here and then I made a shopping list and I'll talk about how to do this in uh, the tutorial. But it is reusable so I used one of these, um, I don't even remember what they're called, but they're like for in medical charts that they <laughs> used to use them before you know computers took over the world. But um, I had a bunch of these in my stash and I thought, well, this is great because you can take this apart and then when you're done using your papers, you can refill it. So I use some of the pattern paper here. I use some of that metallic um, gray cardstock in the Craftology box and I got my Cricut Joy out and I cut out the shopping list, put that on there. This is one of the fussy cut pieces here backed on cardstock and then I just um, punched holes and layered this on there. The back is made out of chipboard um, and it's just covered with the pattern paper and some cardstock so it's nice and sturdy because I don't know about you but when I'm doing recipes, when I'm looking up a recipe, I usually have to go shopping for something because I don't have everything in my house. So it's nice to have a, a shopping list back here but I also talk about how you could put a notebook back here or you know anything you want really. So that is that pocket there. Again another fussy cut piece here with a um, little doily from my stash. So all the doilies are, are from my stash, um, but you totally could just use cardstock and back it on cardstock if you want, or use any of your punches that you want, or get your crickets or your silhouettes out and create little tiny doilies and do that. So um, these were ribbons from my stash, but the red gingham rig ribbon comes in your Craftology box. The black twine also comes in your Craftology box. You will get the buttons that I used um, throughout and on the front, and you will get the flowers as well. So um, without further ado, how about we get into the tutorial? It's gonna be a long tutorial, so you can watch it in pieces and come back to it. Um, it will be available, and um, let's get started. And I hope you really enjoy it, because I tell you what, this is one of my all-time favorite albums that I think I have made. So um, thanks for watching, and let's get going. Okay, let's get started with our cover. For the cover, you will need two pieces of chipboard that are nine by nine and a quarter, and you will need one that's nine by two and a half. And then to cover the chipboard using our black artisan cardstock, and I'm calling this the main color throughout, you're going to need two pieces that are 11 by 11 and a quarter, one piece that's 11 by five and a half. Those three pieces right there are gonna cover the outside of the album, and then you'll need one piece that's eight and seven eighths by five and a half. Now, I've kind of already done some prep work on this. So um, the inside spine cover piece, which is the eight by seven and an eighth, eight and seven and an eighth by five and a half um, piece, I already prepped it with a sheet of score tape. And then I have already done one of the covers for the album. So we're going to do this one together. I did use score tape sheets on these to stick them down to the um, 
the cardstock. And then when I put them in my scoreboard, so I laid the cardstock down. Now make sure, because these are not square pieces, make sure that you get them correct. So the nine and a quarter is the width of the album. The nine is the height of the album, okay? So make sure we got that orientation correctly. So you're gonna want your cardstock 11 and a quarter inch at the top. And then grab your spacers. These are available at Country Craft Creations. And if you don't have them, get them because it makes making the covers just a breeze. They're amazing. So the two pinky orange ones are the uh, one inch spacers and you're gonna have a one inch border all the way around for your cardstock. So you lay your cardstock down, you put your spacers on and then you adhere your chipboard down to that, okay? Those are for the covers. And then for the spine, you're gonna want a little bit more space on the sides for kind of the wing space uh, to adhere the spine to the actual size of the album. So you're going to want to grab the green spacer. That's an inch and a half. And you will have an inch and a half on both sides and an inch top and bottom. Do the same thing. Adhere your chipboard down to that. So then I usually like to do the spine first because I use quite a bit of uh, glue on my spine pieces. And I want to make sure that I don't... Um, you know, I let it dry. So what you're going to do is turn it over. If you haven't seen this, turn it over and feel with your finger the edge of the spine and then use your bone folder and then run it along the edge of the spine. Like so. Okay, all the way around. And then I usually just kind of give it another little fold like so. All right, and then what you're gonna do is on the spine piece, I'm gonna fold this over and I make sure that it's burnished down really well at the edge. And then what I'm gonna do is run it down the side of the chipboard and then kind of hold it with my finger and then push it out, forming the cardstock around the chipboard. Now this is the lay flat binding method that or yeah, Tamara came up with lay flat um, cover method, um, however you want to say it. Um, and it works really, really well. It does take a little bit more cardstock to do this method because you're not just, you know, like piecing two together, but it works really well. And then the album doesn't have that memory that you sometimes get with the other method. Um, this one lays really nice and flat, so I really like it. So once you get that done, then you're gonna grab your glue and we're gonna hope that it's actually gonna come out because usually when I'm on camera, it doesn't wanna come out. Oh, yay, it does. <laughs> That's good. And then we're gonna run some glue on the sides of your chipboard here and then run some there. And then put that back and then fold it over and burnish it down and get a good stick, okay? And I'm gonna run my bone folder against the sides here, okay? And make sure it sticks around the chipboard. This is heavyweight chipboard and it is a little bit thick. So I wanna make sure, one of my big pet peeves is I really don't want my chipboard to show at all. Um, so I try to wrap it with this. Um, if for some reason, you know, you cut it too close when we trim it here in a sec. Um, it does end up showing. You can always use a Sharpie or, you know, some other kind of black pen and you can color the corners and kind of camouflage it. So, but this way, when I do it this way, I don't have that worry because all of the corners of my chipboard are covered. So that's kind of cool. So I'm just, again, making sure that it's burnished right to the side of the chipboard so I get a good stick and then make sure that that gets all stuck down really good. I'm also, let's see, I'm using Art Glitter Glue. That is also from Country Craft Creations. Since I, I do like glue and I have had um, 
you know, use liquid glue in the past, but I'll tell you what, the art glitter glue is actually the best glue ever. I love it. So now that we've got that folded over, we're going to just set this aside, let the glue dry. And we're going to grab our cover and you're going to do both covers the same way. Again, putting them down um, on the cardstock and then feel the edge of the chipboard. We're going to just run it around just like we did with the spine. Maybe I should put this over here. I'm pretty sure you guys can see that. Now you should have in your Craftology box kit um, the cut guide, cut list I should say, for this project. Um, this will take the pretty much the entire kit and it will take pretty much an entire pack of black artisan cardstock and then several you know other sheets that you're going to see in the list that I created so this this is a huge project um, but my idea when I made this project was that I wanted to be able to have a place for pictures and recipes um, thinking that maybe this could be an album that's either passed down through your family or you could give it as a gift like for um, a wedding um, someone who's moving out on their own for the first time you could fill it with recipes you can take pictures of the what the dish is supposed to look like when you're done you could take pictures of your family enjoying the dishes at you know family functions so, you know, it's it's kind of an all-encompassing kind of thing. This is going to hold a ton of recipes and a ton of pictures because I tried to make sure that there was ample room for both. So I've also, um, as you will see, come up with a couple different little pocket ideas. You know me and my kind of trying to configure paper together. Um, I came up with a an all-inclusive all-inclusive um, way to create photo corners on a photo mat and we're going to do that on a couple of the recipe card pages so that you can take your recipe cards out because that was the other thing I really wanted to do was make sure that it was going to be nice and easy for you to take the recipe cards out keep your album pristine but take the recipe cards out and then use them you know for your recipes okay so we folded and we burnished and while we were chatting, I put the score tape around on all four corners. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut my 45 degree angle um, pieces. So on the corner, and if you've seen me do this before, I leave about an eighth of an inch of space here between the chipboard and the cardstock. You don't wanna cut it right at the um, corner because we need to cover the corner of the chipboard. Uh, that's just my way of doing it. So you just, you don't have to be super precise because this is going to be covered with pattern paper, so no big deal. Um, but you want to cut, you know, around about a 45 degree angle. And you want to make sure that there's an eighth of an inch left. And then I'm, I usually fold them top, bottom, and then side to side. So make sure that you look at your um, piece and measure it. One side is going to be nine and a quarter. So nine and a quarter wide. That is is the orientation so this is the top this is the bottom all right the cover will be nine inches tall so you want to make sure nine and a quarter this way and then i'm going to take off my pieces here and then we're going to wrap this and as i've said i've already done the back cover so we're good to go on that all right and then the other thing too is that I chose not to put a tie closure or anything on this album for the outside. We've got plenty of ties and ribbons and things on the inside. Um, so I didn't do it on the outside. It You totally can do that. It's up to you. Um, so when you do this, so top, bottom, and then side to side is how I usually do it. So I run a little bead of glue around the edge. I'm going to just hold it up. Kind of let the glue set and then push it down all right so top and bottom another bead of glue and then some folks do it like this 
and then fold it over. Either way, whatever works for you, however it's more comfortable for you to do it, just fine. Okay, then when you get to the sides, now how we court, you, you'll see that you have some cardstock hanging over the edge, okay? So you just take either your bone folder, some people prefer the bone folder, and they just kind of push that in. I usually take my fingernail and do it. It's just whatever, again, is more comfortable for you. And then just push those corners in and kind of form them around the corner of the chipboard. And that's what's going to cover that up. And it's going to look really nice. Another bead of glue. And then push it down. And then... I usually will run my bone folder kind of sideways on the corners just to kind of push those down. So you'll see that your corners are nice and covered. So it works out really well, okay? Repeat for the next side. And I'm just gonna use my fingernails because that's just what I do. And I just kind of go from the outside edge and push them in. Run your bead of glue. And again, fold it over. And I kind of pause for a second just to kind of let the glue kind of catch just for a second. All right. Then once I do that, then what I like to do, since I did use glue around the edge of the cardstock, I do like to run my bone folder on the sides. And that also like helps the glue, you know, set, but it also kind of squares up the edges because of the chipboard. You know, it is wide. So I want those set so here's our cover covered all right we'll put this to the side for a second now we can finish our uh, spine piece here so what you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to miter the corners just a little bit here on the wings um, so don't cut it too close to the edge of your chipboard just just past it and then just cut off a little wedge there to kind of miter it and it is thick because we've just glued two pieces of artisan cardstock, so it might be a little bit tough, but that's okay. And you don't want to really miter too much. Okay, once you do that, then we're going to just kind of make sure that this is nice and folded. I'm going to burnish it. And burnish it on both sides. Make sure that everything is nice and folded okay we're going to glue this down here real quick and then we will have our cover done okay so you're going to take once we do all that i usually use my scoreboard because i can use the edge of it to help and keep everything nice and square so you can just push that down there, grab your cover, and again, you're going to want to make sure that you got the nine inch side, you know, and it will fit because this is nine tall. So, you know, you will not be able to miss that. And then we're going to just adhere that down. So, what we're going to do is put a piece of the score tape not real close to the edge because you don't want the score tape to show when the book is closed. If you get it too close, then it'll show. And you don't want to use glue too close because then you could um, have the potential of the glue seeping out and then gluing where the actual kind of edges meet and then that will rip your cardstock. So you don't want to do that either. And then I run some glue down the middle. And don't worry, I mean, this is all gonna get covered up with cardstock too, so it's gonna be really reinforced. All right, so then you just line it up and I'm pushing it down at the bottom and I'm kind of easing it right to the edge of that chipboard and then burnish it down. Okay, like so. Make sure you get a good stick and then you have your cover on, okay? So I already did one of the covers uh, just to show you. 
Okay, so there's the back cover here. So we're gonna just repeat the process. I'm gonna put the score tape on and the glue on and then we're just gonna adhere that down, okay? Now, the while I'm putting the score tape on and stuff, um, I'll talk about the covers. So I'll give you the measurements in just a second there on the other piece of paper. Um, what I wanted to do was I really wanted to show off the picture. I wanted to kind of highlight it. So I used a couple pieces of my own red cardstock and then I used the the um, aqua mint color there were two of them that came in your craftology kit and i just double matted the pattern paper and i thought it turned out really pretty and i loved this paper for the cover i mean it was absolutely gorgeous i just love the teal in it so i just double matted that so the black is obviously the cover and then the the two aquamint pieces of cardstock that you had in your kit. I use those and then my own red cardstock. All right. So I'm holding that down, making sure it's nice and flush and putting that down right at the edge. There we go. Okay. Turn it over and burnish. Okay, so now our cover is put together. So you can see this is going to be a huge book, but it's going to be really well worth it. All right, then we're going to take our last piece of cardstock here, and it is eight and seven eighths by five and a half. I use the score tape on it, and we're going to just cover this inside spine. All right. And it doesn't have to be super exact in the middle. You just want to center it as best as you can and um, center it top to bottom. Okay. And then put that down. Let me grab my bigger deal here. It makes it a little easier on the bigger stuff. Okay. And once you stick that down, then grab your other smaller bone folder again, fold this guy up, and then just kind of go in the crease a little bit and kind of help tease it where it needs to be, okay? Do it for the other side as well, where your album cover and your spines meet. All right. And then just kind of fold it over and finish the job, and your cover is complete. I love this method of doing it. I really do. This is really nice. And then when you open it, it lays perfectly flat. Okay. There's the spine. Okay. So then let's put the cover on. Now, again, I did not choose to put the, um, you know, a ribbon closure on there. If you are going to do that, do it before you put your pattern paper down. So then you would just put it in the middle here, adhere it down, and then you would, you know, have your closure put pattern paper on top. I chose not to do that. So this is um, totally a personal preference. So I went ahead and um, made my cover so it's all matted together. So again, for the aqua tint colors, I used two at nine by eight and three quarters. And for the spine, I used one piece that was two and a half by eight and three quarters. And then my, my own red cardstock, I used two pieces that were eight and three quarters by eight and a half and then one piece that was two by eight and a half and i need to remember i will put that on the list okay that'll be on your list and then the pattern paper here um for your cover i used two that were eight and a half wide by eight and a quarter tall and then i used one piece that was eight and a quarter tall by one and three quarters tall all right so where's that other piece okay and then the other thing that i did was in your craftology kit they included this beautiful lace with this red ribbon down the middle of it and i thought it was absolutely gorgeous i wasn't i i, I really really liked it and I, I i wasn't sure how to use it but then i thought well you know what on the spine that would be absolutely i thought really pretty and then i'm planning on putting some sort of a decoration in here at the end of this process so I went ahead and put 
my cardstock pieces together with my pattern paper and then I wrapped the ribbon around and then adhered it down okay and we're just gonna glue this right on top of the spine okay so I'm gonna get my art glitter glue here I'm gonna put that down and then we'll glue the cover piece on and then we can start working on our pages Now, some of the pages, we will have to put pattern paper down before we put elements down. Some we don't. I will go through this whole thing with you. And then when I do the final touches, at the end of this tutorial, we'll have a kind of a final run through. And I'll talk about everything that I did. Okay. I'm just going to stick that down. Now, the ribbon will make it a little bit... Like it wants to bump up a little bit so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some clamps here to help hold that down top and bottom and the art glitter glue will take here no problem there we go I'm gonna put some clamps here at the bottom and help it set okay and then we're just going to put our other piece of pattern paper on the front and I've got a really cool decorative idea here um, that you're going to love but we are going to do that we'll talk about that at the end so just add your glue And I'm going to set that down. Okay. I'm just going to take this off camera just for a second. The clamps, of course, are in the way now. But I'm going to let them sit for a little bit. Make sure that that takes. We will do the inside covers after we do our pages because they are going to be a little bit dimensional and I don't want them to get in the way of um, the pages. So I just think it'd be easier if we did it with the pages first and then put the cover pieces on. But there you go. So there's our cover that we're going to have for our album. Okay, so that part's done. So I'm just going to set this off to the side. Okay, so for your base pages, you will need four pieces that are eight and three quarters by nine and a half. And you're just going to take all four of them and you're going to stick them in your scoreboard and you're going to score them at one half and at three quarters. This is going to give you a half inch tab for binding to the spine and then it's going to give you the quarter inch kind of give space is what I call it when you do books that have a lot of embellishments on it you know you want a half inch gusset for your spine to kind of make room for them but then sometimes the pages need a little help turning because otherwise they kind of get a little you know, I guess stiff or, or, you know, there's so much bulk that sometimes they can't turn properly. So what this will do is give us a little extra room for our pages to lay. Okay. So when you get done with this page, as far as folding it, because we don't count the half inch, we don't count the quarter inch. You're going to have an eight and three quarter inch by eight and three quarter inch page. So you're gonna have a nice square page. Page one has a couple of different elements. So it will have a pocket at the bottom and then it has a waterfall that goes over top and kind of overlaps the pocket and the pocket underneath will hold some recipe cards and things. So what we're gonna do is we're going to need a couple pieces of paper, okay? So first off, let's talk about the pocket. So you're going to need a piece that's two and a half by nine and three quarters. Put that right there and then get your scoreboard. And this is a long pocket. 
um, on the base page, okay? So you score at one half and then at nine and a quarter or one half on each end. And then also turn it to the two and a half and score one side at a half. So pretty basic pocket. So you're just gonna take your scissors and we're gonna miter the corners. Like so. And then we'll fold and burnish. Okay, just like so. And then we're gonna go ahead and you can dry fit just to make sure that we're good and it looks like we're good. So then we can just glue this down. And I'm going to put a little glue on the tabs and then we'll glue this pocket down. So, so far pretty easy. Some of these pages uh, that I did are pretty um, simple and some of them are a little bit more complicated. So some of these we're gonna whip through pretty fast. Some of them we're gonna take a little bit more time. All right, so putting that down. Burnish it down. All right, then the next thing you're going to want to do is, I have all my pieces cut out here. Um, you're going to want to put your pattern paper down. And I cut it eight and three quarters by eight and three quarters. And I'm gonna just tuck this down into the pocket here. And it's going to cover all of the tabs. And especially since this is a real skinny pocket, I just use the full length of the paper. Okay, and then how I usually like to do it because otherwise I get glue all over the place is I stick it where I want it, make sure it's there. And then I go ahead and lift it up and then put glue underneath. Now you don't have to go underneath the whole pocket because the pocket will help hold that down. Like so. And then we're going to make sure that gets stuck down. Okay, so that's the next step. Okay, so that part's done. So then we're gonna grab our waterfall closure you're going to need a piece that's two and a half by six and a quarter. And this waterfall closure, you're gonna put it in your scoreboard and again, you're going to score it at a couple different places. This is in your notes, but you're going to put it on the six and a quarter inch line and you're gonna score it half and you're gonna score at three quarters. That's gonna give you a quarter inch gusset for your waterfalls because we're gonna add some pictures and some recipe cards and some recipe card holder things to your waterfall. So they're gonna get a little bulky. So I wanna make sure I have enough room to kind of make sure that the waterfall works, okay? So you don't have to miter it, but you do have to put some glue on it on the half inch tab only. And then what we're gonna do is grab our centering ruler and we're gonna center it and we're gonna glue it right to the bottom of the pocket. So with my centering ruler, that makes it about four and three eighths on each side of the zero mark here. So we're gonna lay this down right in the middle there. Glue that down. Okay. Like so. Now, the other thing we should have done which you can do at any time, is I'm going to round my corners now. Probably would have been easier to do it, you know, before I stuck it down, but that's okay. We didn't forget. Okay, so there's my waterfall closure. And then you will need some magnets for this. So I have those ready to go. And I'm just going to adhere it right now to the underside of the... Um, belly band closure because we still have to put our waterfall on and everything. So I'm going to make sure that I don't get it too close to the edge because I want to be able to cover it. Okay. So 
right about there, I think will be good. Okay. Then let's put this off to the side for just a second and grab our waterfall pieces because those are going to be the next thing. Let me get this out of the way. All right, so you need three pieces for your waterfall. We have A, B, and C, and these are listed on your guide. So A, waterfall A is 11 and a quarter by six and three eighths. B is 10 and a quarter by six and three eighths. And C is nine and a quarter by six and three eighths. You're gonna take all of these and score them all the exact same way. They will give you different gusset measurements, but that's what we want because we're doing a stacked waterfall, my stacked waterfall. So you'll take the long end of each of them and score at four and three eighths and then turn and score at four and three eighths. That's all you have to do for all of them. And then what we're going to do is fold and work our score lines here on all three. Okay, I'm going to take that off. And then we'll do this. You've seen me do this before. I love this method of making waterfalls. I just think that it's really easy to do and I generally have issues with the other ones that are in pieces because then I never get them quite straight and it drives me nuts so this way I have been able to do it you know nicely <laughs> without messing them up okay so put it on your scoreboard using the edge of your scoreboard as a guide to keep it nice and straight so grab the second piece, it'll have the um, next smallest spine, and we're going to adhere it so that it's a half an inch in from the score, because these have half inch gussets, okay? So add your glue. And then the pages are four and three eighths, so if it makes it easier to kind of push this, you know, down a little bit on your scoreboard and line up this first score here with four and a half, and then you can just line this up at the five, nice and straight against your scoreboard here, and then burnish it down, okay? Really easy to do. And then just make sure it's nice and stuck. Okay, there you go. So next piece, so your third piece C has a half inch gusset spine piece here. So then I'm going to just keep that lining up this score with the five, just because it's easier to look at the halves here. And I'm eyeballing it. I'm kind of off to the side because I'm trying to get my head in the way for you. And then just push that down, lining the new piece up at five and a half. Okay. And there we go. And then just make sure those are nice and scored. So then there you go. You have a waterfall, okay? So you have six pages, and they will be awesome for holding pictures for recipe cards. This is the area you're going to glue, so you're going to be able to use all of the surfaces of it. So that's kind of cool, too. So you're going to grab your page here, and these will overlap the pocket and that's on purpose this is going to go up here and it'll attach to the page with the magnet and there you go so grab your ruler and a pencil and i'm going to gosh my ruler is getting beat up i need a new one really bad i need a new one because my markings are almost disappeared here. So is that about right? About seven eighths of an inch. And I'm just gonna draw a little line here. So seven eighths of an inch from the cardstock, which is about there, okay? And then we're gonna center it. So again, put your, your ruler here and it's gonna be four and three eighths to the edge of the cardstock where you're gonna want it, okay? You put your glue 
on this spine piece of your waterfall only. Okay, make sure we're still lined up nice here. And we are. And I'm just going to center this and lay it down. Okay, there we go. So get make sure that we're stuck down here and make sure that the glue isn't seeping out. And then I'm just gonna go through and make sure that it's stuck down nice. Okay, like so. So you can see, you can use all edges of your waterfall, which is really, really cool. Okay, so then the next thing we're gonna do is set our magnet. Now, when we set our magnet, remember that we have a quarter inch here of a gusset space that we want. So I'm just going to make sure that when I do this, I don't pull it too tight because I want that quarter inch gusset to remain intact. So when you do this, just kind of make sure that you've got that at a 90 degree angle and then just, you know, don't pull it too tight because you want it to have that, that flat space. Does that make sense? I hope it does. And then set your magnet, grab a little score tape, make sure that it sticks. And then the other thing I've been doing lately is I've been like covering the whole thing with score tape. And I think that it kind of almost like makes it so the papers don't mold to the magnet as much and it still gets stuck because of the score tape and there would be glue around. But I have been doing this lately and I, I like it a little bit better. It seems like it kind of camouflages the magnet just a little bit more. So then we have our pattern paper pieces. Um, now you could cover the front of your um, waterfall, okay? And then we're gonna just use one piece of pattern paper because the rest of the pockets are gonna have something special. So I've got all my pieces covered. I will do that later. But again, I'm only gonna put one piece of pattern paper on the front because the rest of the fronts are gonna have belly bands and then the pictures will go on the tops here, okay? And then underneath, we'll have a nice pocket for other recipe cards. We're gonna put pattern paper on the pocket and the belly band as well, okay? So let's, but let's work on the belly band piece that your recipe cards are gonna go in because this is really kind of a cool idea. Um, I wanted to make sure that the recipe cards could come out and you know, yeah, you can use pockets, um, but I wanted to try some different things. So what we're gonna make is a belly band page and what this is going to do is it's going to sit on this page, give it a little bit of contrast, okay? That's why I use the red and your recipe card will go right in. So let me show you, here we go. So then once we glue this down, then your recipe card will slide right in there just like that. So when your book is closed, you're gonna see the recipe card, you'll see the belly bands, and it'll be a really nice way to have your recipes, but then you can also take them out and use them. So um, they're wrapped around, so the tabs won't interfere with your recipe card at all. And I'm gonna make one for you, but I'll just show you what this one looks like. And it just sits like right here. So I use, this is my own, from my stash, red artisan cardstock. So you will need um, some coordinating color, whatever you prefer, because there's all kinds of colors that will go with this. Um, but let's make one. So basically the belly bands, you'll need five that are one and a half by five and a half. And you just score them on each end at one half, okay? Then you're gonna need five pages for the waterfall piece, the actual kind of backing, and they're four and a quarter by six and a quarter. So just what I did was, you're gonna center them 
on your cardstock. So I'm just going to set this down. Oh, excuse me. And this is, this is a little strange. So the, the, um, the center from zero is three and an eighth to this end. And then the, the actual belly band needs to sit right in the middle. So I'm just kind of lining that up. So it sets with the edge at the three quarter mark. And I hope that makes sense, but that's how you line it up. Okay. And then I'm just going to make sure that when you do this, okay, dry fit it, you may need to take a little teeny tiny slice and I'm talking little teeny tiny slice off of the base piece here. So just, uh, I went ahead and already did that when I prepped all this. You may need to do that, okay? So just a warning, you want this to be, you know, somewhat flat, you want it to fit. So just make sure that before you glue them down, make sure you dry fit it and make sure that if you need to, take a little teeny tiny sliver off of this base. Okay, and this is all there is to making these. I mean, this is super simple. Okay, so you just need five of those for five, all five pages of this particular waterfall. So this will go, <laughs> I could show you, this will go right here. And so each page will have one of these. Okay, so that's, that's all there is to this page right here. And um, it just needs to be finished and covered with pattern paper. I'm going to do that at another time. Actually, I'm not going to put those in there because we're going to work on the other side. So I will finish this piece. You, you will see this, but that's the waterfall page that goes on page one. Page two is a fun page because it has stepped pockets that will go up the page and hold lots of recipe cards. And so we're going to need two, what I'm calling top pockets. So those are going to be the pockets that sit here and here. And then we're going to need the bottom pocket that's going to sit here at the bottom. They are different widths. So please be aware of that. Um, and the reason why is because the pockets, the top pockets will set kind of underneath the bottom pockets and then they'll all be symmetrical, which is, you know, something that I'm into. So, <laughs> so the two top pockets are nine and three quarters by three and a half. And the bottom pocket is three by nine and three quarters. And we're going to score all of these the same on the sides. We're going to score at half an inch. And then on the long side, we'll score at half an inch. Okay. So all of these pockets are basically the same. So I'm going to blow through these really super quick. You're gonna miter all your corners. And then I'm doing a pretty good uh, 45 degree cut on these to help with bulk. So on the bottoms here to try and alleviate some of that. Because I want the bulk to be from all the recipe cards you're gonna stuff in here, not from um, a ton of card stock. So I'm gonna do that, doing this really quick here. Sorry about that. All right, so we got those. And then go ahead and fold and burnish. We've got our pockets folded and, and burnished and everything. So the two wider pieces are going to be the top pockets. The small one is the bottom. Start with the top pockets. So we're gonna take the top of our page, make sure you got the top of your page, and then I'm gonna open this up just so I don't mess up my gusset here. And you're gonna take your first pocket here and what we're going to do is glue it to the page and we're going to glue it so that it is one and a quarter inches from the top okay so i'm just going to grab my ruler so that i know where that is and then i'm going to line this up and glue that down Okay, so far easy peasy. Okay, and then we're going to take our next pocket 
and we're going to glue that on. So then grab your next pocket and we're going to put glue on this one. And this is going to set at a half an inch over the pocket we just put on. So I just want to make sure that I'm going to measure here real quick. So about a half an inch. I'm going to make a little tick just to show me where that is. Okay. And then I'm going to line that up and that's where I'm going to do it. Okay, we'll glue that down. Now this one's really pretty easy pocket uh, page and it's going to hold a ton of recipe cards. And then you could put loose tags in here. You could tuck pictures in the pockets with the recipes. So it's gonna work out really well. Now this bottom pocket just gets glued right to the bottom of the page and it will overlap the top pocket perfectly. So this bottom pocket here, I'm gonna glue that on. Line that up right at the bottom. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so there's our pockets. So we'll put the belly band back here so you can see what it's gonna look like. All right, so I have some papers cut. So what I did was I took strips and I've got this strip. I love this shelf strip with the flour and the salt containers and everything. So I'm gonna put that here and then I have my other strips ready to go. So um, I just took some pattern paper. So this strip here, the first two are about three inches and then the top one is two inches. So we're, those are just gonna tuck right in the pocket and get glued down if I can get it in the pocket because I'm doing it sideways or I'm not doing it sideways I should say come on Michelle you can do it you can do it so these are going to get glued down like so they don't have to go all the way to the bottom of the pocket and that one I totally put it upside down but I'm not gluing it yet so don't panic. I will fix that. <laughs> so anyway, you can get the gist of what it's going to look like. So I kind of want it to look like the counter with the wallpaper behind it. That's what I was going for. And then I took one of the pieces of the paper fussy cut um, the image out, backed it on some cardstock, and this guy is going to kind of go down here as a decorative element. So this is what this page is going to look like. So I will, of course, get back and show you what the final product looks like, but that gives you kind of the idea of what this page is going to look like. So we've got page two here and page one, and we're going to move on to page three. Page three is a fun page because it has a page pocket, like we've been doing on the base, the bottom pocket, and then it also has some flat pockets. So we're gonna put the flat pockets on first. And for those, you are going to need two pieces that are seven and a half by six. All right, so let me undo these. And these, um, when we get done with them, I already did one of them, but what they'll do is they will have a flap that will go and open up and then there's a pocket here for your recipe card. And there's going to be two of these pockets. Now, the way that I did them was I did them kind of off center. So one is a little bit higher and one is a little bit lower. So we're going to um, kind of offset them a little Let's bit. Let's grab this one and I'll show you how to make them. You're going to make two. And again, they're seven and a half by six. So you're going to put your seven and a half at the top. You're going to score at half. You're going to score at one quarter and then you're going to score at seven and then you're going to turn it clockwise 
and you're going to score at one and three quarters. So then what we're going to do is, I'm going to put my page out of the way here for just a second, and this little page here out of the way. So this is going to fold up, and these two bottom pieces are going to end up being tabs for that pocket. So the first thing we're going to do is let's miter the bottom side here that only has the one score line. We're going to miter that, and then we're going to cut the rest of that half inch piece out because we don't need it. Just like that. All right, trim that up just a wee bit more. Okay, and then the bottom piece here, same thing, but you're gonna cut through both score lines. Okay, so cut through both score lines all the way up. Now here, cut straight up that score line. This piece that I'm holding with my thumb here, this piece is going to be what attaches it to the book and it's going to be a quarter inch gusset. So you have the extra quarter inch piece my hanging chat again, um, that we're going to ignore. We're just going to use that as part of the tab. So we'll fold those back and then that will fold up and be the pocket on the back. And then this is going to be the binding. And then this is going to be a quarter inch gusset space. Okay. So let me get this out of the way. Let's turn this over. We're going to burnish these score lines. So again, the two score lines on the one side will just go in and, and we're gonna just use that for the pocket. It'll just be a wider tab and that's it. No big deal. Okay, so this is gonna be the pocket for your recipe card right here. And then this will be the actual page attachment. Now you don't have to, um, you don't have to miter the corners because they're gonna be not at the edges of the book. So they're gonna be covered up by pattern paper, okay? But I did, if you want to, you can, but don't miter through the quarter inch space. Okay, let me show you here. Don't miter the quarter inch, keep that straight. Just You just wanna miter the half inch. An tab. inch and a quarter from the top and the bottom is where we're gonna glue it. So let's make the pocket because we have to do that first. Gosh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm so excited. This project, I gotta tell you, this project, I love this paper. This, I, I, I totally love cooking. I am totally into cookbooks. I collect vintage cookbooks. So whenever I find them at, you know, garage sales or, you know, the vintage store that I like to go to or whatever, I get vintage books. I get reproductions of vintage books. I just love them. So when I saw this paper, um, I was just totally like, Awe inspired by it. It was just uh, amazing. Okay, so we're going to add these pages. Now, one page will go to one side. Make sure your pockets are oriented right. So this one will go to the bottom, and this one's going to go to the top. And I'm going to just glue the half inch piece at about an inch and a quarter down from the top. So I'm just going to use my ruler and right about here. Don't go into the score of your page. Just right to the edge of that quarter inch give space there. Okay. And then again at the bottom here, same thing. And then these will be offset, but then they're also going to um, layer over each other. And let me do it this way so I can see. I'm going to turn it upside down and at about an inch and a quarter right there, put that down. Just like that. Okay, so this is our page. This is page three. We're going to have quarter inch gussets, little give space kind of thing. And then we're gonna have a pocket underneath. So you can decide how you want them to overlap. You can have them overlap um, this way if you want to. We're gonna have a magnet closure or you can overlap it this way. I chose to overlap it this way and the reason why is because I didn't wanna fuss with the magnet and the pocket and all that and it's such a small space to try and cover. So I went ahead and overlapped it in this direction, okay? So I'm just gonna make sure that my gussets 
for my pockets here are straight. I'm going to grab my magnet. And anywhere up in here is a good spot. So I'm just going to put it right about there. Take that off. Oop, not yet. I didn't quite want it stuck yet. I'm going to make sure that everything is straight. And I've got kind of my gussets are straight up and down and then set it down. Okay. Just like that. All right. And then again with the tape and I'm going to cover like the whole thing, kind of layer everything over it. And honestly, I think that it helps camouflage the magnet. I could be crazy, but well, maybe I am crazy. Okay. So then, then the next piece is the bottom pocket. So the reason why we're doing that next is because it's actually going to overlap this tab for this pocket. So again, we're going to miter corners and I'm going to really make sure that I cut off the, um, gosh, come on, Michelle, you can do this. You can do this. I'm going to cut those corners off so that we can get rid of some bulk. I'm going to fold and burnish. All right, add my glue. Well, first I'm going to dry fit just to make sure that it's not too big. It's not going to go on this score and it's perfect. good to go. Okay, there's that. So I will show you what I had envisioned for this page. So this will close like that. Got my pattern papers here. So what is going to happen is on each of the pages on on the outside of these flaps we're going to have a photo mat then in the inside i use this beautiful and now i can't remember the name of it but this really beautiful paper that came in your kit it's this green with the embossed dots and that is going to go in here and then you're going to have this cute little um shelf with your ball jars okay so each side is going to be the same thing i'm showing you what i was envisioning and it's going to be really really cute because the other thing that i tried to do when i was designing this was let me get some more clips here um was that i wanted to kind of also keep the pages with the symmetry <laughs> so this is page three it's going to be opposite of page two Page two was the kind of the shelf or the counter with the wallpaper concept that I had. And if I can get this in here, we'll be good. Oh man, why is it that I have trouble on camera and otherwise I can whip this stuff out like crazy? Okay, get it in there. This is gonna go all the way down and it's going to cover the tab in the bottom so your recipe cards don't stick. So this is the kind of the concept. So if we look back at, what did I do with my page two? Page two, this is gonna be the opposite page when you open up your book. So you can kind of see where I was going with this. So that was my idea. Um, so that is, that is page three. I'm just gonna tuck this in here. I will finish it later but you can kind of get the gist of this so pictures of your family or the recipes themselves and then on the back you have the pocket for the recipe cards 
So, and then the other thing we didn't do, which I should have done, is fold and burnish my page tabs here, which I'll do that real quick. There we go. Do that on the rest of them. Page four, double belly band page. I'm calling it a double belly band because we're gonna do it and glue it down so that you have actually two spots for recipe cards to slide under. So you just need one belly band though. We're just gonna use glue, that's all we're gonna do. So it's really, really, really simple. So I used a piece that was two inches by nine and five eighths and then I have my pattern paper because we need that. And this is eight and five eighths by eight and five eighths. And then all you're going to do is you're going to score your belly band at half an inch on each end and we're going to make sure that this fits because it's going to wrap around this page so i'm going to turn this over and i'm going to we want to center it so when we put this in it's going to be just a wee past like a 16th inch past the four and a quarter mark on each side from the zero and then this is two inches, so we're gonna kind of slide it to where it's at one inch, okay? So just like that. And then I'm gonna fold it down, I'm gonna hold it. I'm just gonna make sure, now I did play with it last night to make sure, but yeah, it is it is fitting. The page isn't bulk, um, you know, uh, bowing. So we're just gonna do this, and I'm gonna glue on one tab only. And I'll show you why in just a second. Okay. So glue either the bottom or the top, doesn't really matter, but only glue one to keep it where it needs to be. Burnish it down and then flip it over. And then what we're gonna do is find the middle of this belly band. So that will be roughly the same, just past the four and a quarter mark, okay? just past it that's about it right and then I'm just gonna put a bead of glue just a very small bead of glue right down the middle okay you don't want too much and actually that might be a little too much I take a little bit off okay and then we're going to fold it over lay it down and then turn it over and glue the other side all right so that's it that is it so then what you're going to end up with is two places that you can slide your recipe card in one top one bottom and you have two spots and and you can actually it will hold you know several recipe cards so um that's pretty much it so then i'm going to just cover my belly band and i was using up some scraps so this is i usually when i mat my stuff i usually mat it so that i cut it an eighth inch shorter you know um to to mat things um I was using up some scraps and some of the pieces I still have to go through the scraps to figure out what I'm going to do. But, um, so this one's a little bit, little bit, you know, more cut than that, I guess. It's, it's smaller than normal. Let's put it that way. But that's okay because I like the black. And I think it really pops this inner piece. And then what I'm gonna do was I took this other cutout and I, I fussy cut around it. And then I backed it on a little scrap of the aqua tint that I had. And then I backed it on with a little bit of black. And then that's gonna set over the top here. And I have an idea about something else I'm gonna do. So I'm not gonna adhere that quite yet. I'm just gonna go ahead and um, actually not going to do that yet because we're going to put it on the page 
Yikes. Okay. So I'm going to take some of the bulk out here by opening this up and laying it flat. And then we're just going to glue this to the page. And that's all we're going to do. Double belly band page. Super, super simple. So just put glue on your paper. We go so that's it and that's a that's a really nice simple page but that is a really cool page because you can put lots of um you can put lots of recipe cards in here this will fit several of them and um pictures and whatnot so i think that's really kind of a cool page so this is page um four on page five and this is kind of a, a complicated page but it has this really cool page photo mat um pocket that is actually the closure for the book and then it also has the two pages that pop out and it has a pocket on the base page the two flat pages and then it also has another waterfall so this page is meant to hold recipe cards in the pockets but then the waterfall is where the pictures go so the first thing we need to do are get the page flaps done and they are two at eight and a quarter by five and three quarters and we're going to stick those in the scoreboard and we're going to on the five and three quarter inch side we're going to score at one half and three quarters so again another quarter inch um gusset and then what we're going to do is fold and burnish those pages and just get them done. Now you do not have to miter these because these are not uh, going to the uh, top of the page or the bottom of the page. They're going to be kind of in the middle. So they're a little bit shorter than the base page. And I kind of did that on purpose because I wanted to a little peek at the paper on the inside. So... All right, so we've got our two pages. They're gonna go on the page and they're gonna fold out like that. So the, that's the first thing we're gonna do. So we're gonna grab uh, another base page and we're going to, this time, we're gonna fold and burnish those. Okay, so we have our base page. This is page five. All right, so one of these is going to go on this side, centered, and then the other one's gonna go over here. So that's the first thing we're gonna do. I'm gonna make sure that's nice and burnished, and I'm gonna put glue on here. So it's gonna be about a quarter of an inch from the top and the bottom, because this is eight and a quarter inch tall, and the pages are eight and three quarter inch tall, so I'm just gonna eyeball this and just make sure you don't get it in your score line for your base page. So just like that. Then you're gonna do the same thing for the other side. And then the easy thing to do to match it up is to just lay this down and when you glue it down, just make sure that the tops and the bottoms of that base page line up. So that's pretty easy to do. Once you measure one and then you don't have to measure again. Okay, so I'm gonna lay that down. I'm gonna match, and I know this is hard to see with the black cardstock, but I know y'all get the drift here. Okay, so the pages are lined up. You can see that. Okay. make sure that's down all right then the next thing i'm going to do is open this up we're going to put some pockets down okay so there'll be a pocket here a 
pocket here and a pocket here. So for the pockets for the flaps, you're gonna need two that are two by six. And we're gonna do the usual pocket thing. We're going to miter the corners. I'm gonna miter really harshly here so that we take out the bulk in the corners. And then pocket for the base page is two inches by eight and three quarters. And again, same thing. I'm gonna put it in my scoreboard do it at an inch or excuse me half an inch there half an inch here and then on the long side one at the half an inch and then miter all these things so i'm going to do that real quick and i will be right back i'm back and i realized when i did that that i gave you the wrong measurement and i cut my piece wrong so the base pocket and on your notes it is correct is supposed to be two by nine and three quarters, not two by eight and three quarters. I apologize for that mistake, um, but I did cut another piece. It is two by nine and three quarters. That is the correct measurement, okay? So then what I did was I put the two by six pieces, I made those into the pockets, put those on, and we're going to put this on now. So I'm, I'm really sorry about that. I'm going to, in the editing, <laughs> <laughs> get that fixed for you so you know that I messed up before you get too far. But it is correct on your guide. I did double check that. All right. And we're just going to make sure it's going to fit, which it is. Perfect. And... I'm going to cut a little bit more off this one because it's not folding right. I think I didn't quite get it to the score. Oops, there goes all my stuff. Okay, so we'll glue this big long pocket down. And again, it'll be ample room for lots of recipe cards to kind of go in here. Glue that down right at the bottom of the page. Okay. There we go. All right. So then the next thing we're going to do is you have to put your pattern paper on the base page before we go anywhere else. And I've got my pages <laughs> kind of already mapped out here. Um, so let me undo this here real quick and we will put that on there. I will finish papering everything and then of course we will go through the run through. Um, but you can see this is gonna be really super cute and it's gonna tie into you know our other page. So that's awesome. So this page here, I'm using the doily, this beautiful pink, doily paper and I'm going to just tuck that in there and it's going to cover all of those tabs and be absolutely super cute. Okay, so now that we have that on there, and then this is the other thing I was going to show you. This is going to go here, and then I'm going to have this little gal who I fussy cut out of the little, um, the cut apart sheet, and I backed it on cardstock, and, and she's going to sit right there in the middle. <laughs> so I think that's going to be really super cute. But the reason why we have to put the pattern paper on now is because the waterfall is going to go right on top of it. So you're going to have a couple pieces. Now, you don't really need to have a closure on this because these pages are going to have a closure. And where is it? Ha! Here it is. We got to still do that. But um, so you really don't need 
a closure for your waterfall in there, but we're going to go ahead and talk about it. So if you want to do it, you can. I haven't honestly decided if I'm going to do it yet or not. But anyway, um, there's two options for you if you want to. If you do want to, then you're going to need one more magnet. If you don't, then you don't. So this is going to be 10 by 6 and a quarter. And you're going to score at four and a quarter, and then you're going to turn and score at four and a quarter. And again, this was meant for pictures because the recipe cards are going to go in the pockets. So this one is nine by six and a quarter. I probably should have told you that too. Peace be. Oh, I'm getting um, squirrely, aren't I? So score at four and a quarter and then turn it and score at four and a quarter. Okay. So then we're gonna whoop, we're gonna do the same thing that we did the other time with our waterfall. It's just a stacked waterfall again, like we did. All right, and I think let's see. Let's go ahead and fold and burnish our score lines. So only two uh, pieces of paper for this waterfall but you'll still have tons of place for pictures because it'll give you, what, six, eight pages, which will hold like 15 to 16 pages, depending on how you go about this, okay? Um, I need this again. So, yes, we have to glue them together. See, I told you I was getting ahead of myself. Okay, so take... The second piece, this is piece B of the page five waterfall. Put your glue on the half inch spine. Line this up. It should, the score should line up at four and a quarter. So we're going to go at four and three quarters to line up that folded edge. And then burnish it down. I love this way of making waterfalls. <laughs> I love it. I just love it. Okay. So. Then we take our book, and what we're going to do is we're going to, you can either put it like this, you can put it like this, doesn't matter. The recipe cards will go in here, so that will, like I said, keep it closed, plus these are going to be over the top of it as well. Did you see that? <laughs> so... However you want to put this waterfall, it doesn't really matter because recipe cards are going to be put in this pocket. So that'll help keep it closed. The other thing too, and the recipe cards can go like this as well. The other thing too is it can go like this. And that's going to keep them closed. So you really don't have to have a closure. So if you don't want one, don't use one. If you do, I'm going to show you how to do that. Um... But basically, you're just going to glue this piece down, and you can either glue it portrait or you can glue it landscape, however you really want to do it. So I think I want to do it like this. So I'm going to do it like that. So again, recipe cards will go in the pocket. That will also help keep them closed because they'll close right over the top of this if you want. You don't even have to do that if you don't want to because this, again, will close it. So... All that being said, I am going to turn it upside down so I can see better, and I'm going to put my glue on here. I'm going to glue this spine, and then I'm just going to center it, and I'm going to center it at about, I don't know, I think three quarters of an inch down I think would be good. So I'm just gonna do that three quarters of an inch from the top, right in the middle, right about there. Like so. Okay, so there's your waterfall. Now, if you keep it like this without a closure, you have access to all of the pages, which is one thing that I love about this waterfall. Um, I don't know. I just think it's really cool. So the closure, if you want the closure, and I did 
I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and do it, but you don't have to, I'm going to just go ahead and do it to show you, but this is, um, three and a half by two and we're going to take it and we're going to score it on one end only at a half. Put my glue on my half inch and then I'm going to center it. Oh man, if I ever got my ruler right on the first try, I think y'all would faint. All right. I'm going to turn it so I can see it. Uh, I'm just going to slide that under there. Like that. Okay. Is that right? That looks right. Okay. That looks right. All right. So I'm just going to glue that on there. Okay. So now it's glued to the back of my waterfall. Okay, so now I'm going to have to glue the bottom page down because that's the whole point of making a closure, right? So that it stays flat. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this down. Now, again, you don't have to. You don't have to put a closure on here. And there you go. You just, we will lose one place for a picture, but that's not like a total deal breaker. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so one set of magnets for this, and we're going to set those. I'm just looking to see, make sure that's a good spot, I think it is. And then usually when I put them down, I don't put them down too forcefully. Because I want to kind of, I, I like to try and check and make sure I've got enough space here, which I don't think I do. So I'm going to put it up just a little bit more. There we go. Let's try that. Yeah, I like that better. I think I like that better. I think I do. Okay. Um, so there you go. So there's that. So the inside part is done. And then you have this flap and this flap. Okay. So then what we're going to do is there's a pocket flap that's going to create the closure for that whole thing. So you're going to need a piece that's nine and a half by five and a half. And we're going to put it in our scoreboard. And so let's put it in at the nine and a half score at half and at five and then turn it clockwise so that the half inch score is at the top and then do another half inch score okay so then we're going to do some cutting and what we're going to do is we're going to hold it so that our half inch tab is at the top here and we're going to miter that corner and then what we're going to do is miter this corner and we're going to miter it all the way and then miter this piece. This piece will be cut straight because that's going to add to your page. That's gonna be the binding strip. So we're gonna cut that straight, miter, and then I'm gonna miter all the way across for bulk. And you're gonna end up with a piece that looks like this. Okay, so. Fold and burnish. Now this straight cut piece here, we're gonna leave out. We're gonna glue these two pieces down and that is going to fold down and create our pocket, just like that. Now this pocket was intended to hold recipe cards on the inside and then have photo mats on the outside. So then it's going to have a magnet closure that will close everything. Okay. Okay. So then we're going to grab our page and this guy is going to set 
right on top of this page right here, just right on the top. So I'm gonna just make sure that this is burnished down really well. And actually what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna burnish this the other way. So what I'm doing, I'm thinking again, is um, the, the tabs that make the pocket, I'm actually having them at the bottom. So I kind of folded this the opposite direction so that it doesn't interfere with the actual movement of the pocket. I hope that makes sense. So um, I'm folding it just the opposite direction. Um, the tabs that we use to make the pocket are at the bottom now, okay, and at the top here on the, on the front. And then this is gonna fold down and glue right here. And I am starting to get tired, so I might need to take a break. So <laughs> I just wanna make sure I'm doing this right for you and I'm starting to get a little squirrely. So anyway, here we go. Um, I, 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 what am I doing here? Okay, so these are basically about the same width, so that is correct, and I'm just gonna center it and glue it down right on the other side. So we've got about an eight, eight and a quarter, so that's four and an eighth from the center. Okay. And then I'm gonna push, put this down, center that right before the score line, not in the score line, obviously. actually wrong. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I need to take a break. <laughs> this is a long tutorial. I know I've got some editing to do, but I have been doing this for quite a while now. Okay. So what's going to happen is the pages are going to overlap like this. So magnet will go under here. You're going to have a pocket here. This is going to have a photo mat here. Your recipe card or cards mm -hmm. will go in here, okay? There will be a magnet closure, and then it'll open up like this, another photo mat, nice, beautiful pattern paper here, open it up, recipe cards here, and then a photo mat that I'm gonna add up here. And then you're gonna have your waterfall for more pictures, okay? Or recipes, you could put recipes there too if you want, and then recipe cards here. And I hope that makes sense. So that's page five. Page six is a fun page. It has a top flap, a bottom flap. It has a pocket page that I came up with that I thought was really kind of cool. And um, I'm calling it, it's kind of an odd name, but I'm calling it a photo map pocket page um, because it, I'll show you in a second, but it's really kind of cool. And I actually came up with a way to use it for recipe cards too, which we're gonna use in um, a, our later page. So um, let's get started with page six now. There was a couple things I just wanted to mention real quick. So I did um, go back. I, I did set the magnet and everything. So this magnet here, where I put it, I did have to alter it a little bit because it was fighting with this magnet. This magnet wanted to kind of move the page up. So what I did was I had to take this magnet off hook it to this magnet here so it was at the same place so that it basically connected to here. Then I had to change this magnet so, uh, where it was to match that magnet. And then everything lined up together. And then, so I just wanted you to be aware of that. I think in retrospect, um, putting a magnet here is probably not the best idea considering that we've got all this and all this. So disclaimer, <laughs> learn from, um, my mistakes. And, um, if you, if you do want to do this, 
um, that's great, but just make sure all your magnets are going to end up lining up because otherwise they're going to fight for each other and your pages are going to get all wonky. And I hope that makes sense. But um, there you have it. So you don't really even need this at all. I think the, the next time I do it, um, I won't do this. So that's um, the other reason why it's optional. So anyway, um, but I did want to show you how to do that. So, you know, I may end up taking it out towards the end of this tutorial and just getting rid of this whole closure piece somehow. But anyway, um, just be aware. If you're going to do that, that's great. And it works. It works. It works. It works. But make sure, you know, you're going to end up fighting with this magnet here. So you're going to have to use this magnet also as placement for this magnet. I hope that makes sense. And then close like that. Okay, so page six. We have um, two pieces. One is a top flap and a bottom flap. They're both the same, eight and three quarters by five. And you're going to put them in your scoreboard and I have them upside down, but you're gonna score them at half and three quarters, just like we have been doing. And this is in your um, cutting guide. And you're gonna fold and burnish. And then you are gonna miter the half inch tabs. And if you want, you can round your corners, but they're not, they're gonna meet each other in the middle of the page. They don't overlap. So, you know, I don't think I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna do that. I don't think I'm gonna keep them square, um, but that's totally up to you. Okay, so we have this. We're gonna grab our page and I'm gonna open everything up so that I have less bulk to deal with. So we're on page six and I've got it as flat as I possibly can. So we're gonna miter and we're gonna place this and I'm just gonna real quick before I glue it down, I just wanna make sure that they're wide enough but not gonna go right into scores or anything like that and I think I am going to maybe trim just a wee hair I cut off like less than a sixteenth of an inch and I think that's going to just really yeah that's gonna make it fit much better and then that way it won't compete with that so I did that let's go ahead and glue this on Get it right there in the center, set it down. Again, we mitered. Okay, I'm gonna turn this whole piece around and I'm going to miter these corners here. For now, and then I'm going to lay this down, and again, I'm going to match the edges of these pages because I want them to match together, you know. Um, kind of easy to do with this one because you know they pretty much go the width of the page, so. But I want to make sure. I don't want it off if I can help it. So we're back and I am working on page six and I've got the flaps on here. So these flaps, there were two that were um, five and an eighth by eight and three quarters. So when you put them on, got them glued, there's a quarter inch gusset. When they fold up and the gussets are straight, then these should actually meet. Okay, so that part is done. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the, um, actually, let's create the closure here real quick. So, um, in order to create the closure, it's just a ribbon closure, so pretty easy. So I got a couple pieces of paper ready to go. 
So um, I love these papers. They are so pretty. So I fussy cut this out, backed it on some black cardstock, which I need to trim because I can see a little fuzz there. And um, just going to use that to do the closure. So I'm also going to use some of this beautiful red gingham ribbon that you had in your uh, design team, or uh, excuse me, design team, uh, craftology box. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put ribbon on the bottom here and then put the pattern paper over top. So I'm going to just do this. I'm going to get my ruler, my score tape, get the center. I used um, two lengths of a foot a piece. So you'll need two feet of your ribbon for this. I'm just kind of trying to center this. And I'm going to back up just a hair. There we go. Sorry if my head's in the way. Put that score tape down. And then take your ribbon and put your length of ribbon right in the middle. Okay. Then I'm going to turn this around. And we're going to make sure. Now I did the pattern paper so that it was you know, consistent. So when the pages close, then, you know, the pattern will stay the same. So make sure you do that. And then we're going to put the pattern paper down on the bottom. Put a little extra glue over the ribbon and There we go. It's even hard for me to see with it being all black, that's for sure. <laughs> all right. All right, so the bottom ribbon is on. Okay, I'm gonna open this up and then we're gonna do the top. Now the top ribbon is gonna go underneath this really pretty little piece that we're going to put right in the middle. So I'm going to put the pattern paper down first. I love this paper. So pretty. Okay. All right. So then, so this is going to close and it's going to look, of course, let me get my gussets like the correct way. It's going to be like that. Then we're going to put the ribbon down the middle of this, which is easy because it has a point on the design. I'm going to put my ribbon here. Right through the middle like that okay so we have our ribbon on there and then we're just going to line this up right in the middle and glue it down and then that's going to be our closure and still got that fuzz there there we go got it all right Page six. We've got two more pages and the inside covers, then we're done, which is cool. All right, so just gonna line this up right like so. Okay, did we do that right? Oh, I think we did. All right. Press that down. Make sure we get a good stick. I just, oh, I love this paper. It is absolutely gorgeous. All right, so then when we close it, then we're just going to tie a pretty little bow and then that will be our closure. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so. Last piece we have to do on this page is inside. 
we have to put our pattern paper down first and then we're going to put our pocket on. So I've cut this piece of pattern paper that's gonna go right on the inside just like that. And then we're gonna make this, what I'm calling a photo mat pocket. So I was thinking about trying to figure out like all the different things that you could do to make it so that recipe cards could come out. So pockets, obviously, um, the belly bands, what we did on the first page, we did that. And then I came up with this other idea and then I kind of like elaborated on it and made this pocket. So this is kind of like a, almost a giant version of what we're gonna do next, but it's really cool. And it makes the corner pockets or the corner like, um, you know the little, um, the photo, what do they call those? Where the little, you know what I'm talking about. The, <laughs> the little, little photo corners, photo corners. Yeah, there, there you go. That you can put on um, so you can take pictures in and out. So basically it's a kind of an all-in-one thing. We're gonna cut it out and do it all together. So, and it's gonna be all out of cardstock. It's gonna be really cool. So the photo mat pocket is really kind of cool because it's kind of an all-in-one thing where you end up getting like photo corners out of it. So we're gonna do a little bit of funny cutting and configuring, but I love this stuff, so we're gonna do it. And then we're gonna do it full-blown, all four corners coming up here in a minute. So you will need one piece that's nine by six and a quarter. And what we're gonna do is put it in our scoreboard and at the, with the nine at the top, and we're gonna score at one half inch and then we're gonna score at eight and a half. And you're gonna turn it clockwise, put it in your scoreboard so the six and a quarter is at the top, and you're gonna score at two. And then you're gonna turn it one more time. So you're gonna have the nine at the top with the two inch score that we just did at the top. And you're going to score again, but you're only gonna score down to this two inch score line here. You're gonna score at two and a half, and you're gonna score at six and a half. So what that's gonna give you at the top here is a half inch tab, a two inch square. Here's a rectangle here, two inch square, half inch tab, okay? And then you have this big rectangle here and then two half inch tabs here, okay? So this is gonna create a couple different pockets actually. So what we're gonna do is the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the tabs at the top like that. And then we're going to miter here to the half inch score. So we're gonna just do that and that. So you'll end up with two tabs. This will attach kind of the photo corner part. This will attach to the page and create the pocket. All right, so then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then we're gonna miter these out. So we create the two tabs on the sides. All right, so we have that. So now these two smaller scores are basically just guides for us. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a diagonal from this corner here at the bottom to that particular point there where the two inch square meets. And we're gonna basically make it into a triangle. We're gonna cut it into a triangle. Now, I'm, I am eyeballing this. If you want to use a straight edge, you can, but basically this is what you're gonna make, all right? And then we're gonna do it again on this side from the corner, and we're going to just go to where those two scores intersect and cut that out there. And then we're gonna cut this whole piece out right here. Okay, just cut on the score line, cut that funky little piece that we just made out. Okay, just like that. So you're going to end up with a piece that looks like that. Okay. So then what we're going to do is a little bit of folding. So these two top tabs here are going to create pocket sides for our page. So we're gonna just fold those back and burnish them. Like so. So those will glue onto the page. And then we're gonna take this, we're gonna fold it up. And then we're gonna fold this tab to the back. And that is going to create these cool little 
like photo corner pockets like that on both sides. So again, we're going to fold this bottom piece up. Like so. And then we're going to fold that little half tab to the back. And there you have it. So there's your pocket piece right there. Okay? So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to glue these tabs here down to the other tabs. Come on, glue. There you go. Like so. And do that to the other side. Okay, so now what you're going to have is you're going to have the two tabs in the back and you're going to have your two little triangle pockets here in the front. Okay, so we're going to grab our page and I put it way over there. So let me get this back into its proper orientation maybe. There we go. Okay, so here's our page. This pocket is going to adhere right on the top, just like that. All right, so I wanted to put everything together so it didn't confuse you. So we've got our page five here, all the pieces. So I'm gonna open, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up so I don't have all the bulk, so I can put the pocket down, okay? So we're just gonna flip it open. I'm gonna open that waterfall up. All right, so now I've got a flat surface here and we're just gonna glue that right there. So we're gonna glue the tabs and then we're just gonna put a line of glue at the bottom because there is no bottom tab for this. And then this will be a really nice pocket for pictures and for recipe cards. Line of glue here. And then I'm just gonna center it. So there's roughly about a quarter of an inch from the bottom and in from the sides. There we go. I think this is a cool pocket. I like it, to tell you the truth. I like it. So where is, yeah, so I'm gonna have this paper in here like so, and then I cut pieces of the, the teal, the aqua tint paper, and that's gonna go there, and that's gonna be the pocket. So you're gonna have a pocket behind, and then you're gonna have two little corner pockets that you can tuck things in. So that was my idea for that. And again, I won't um, make you watch all of that part, We'll do a final walkthrough at the end, but that's kind of the concept, okay? So then this page will close like so, and it will tie with this pretty little bow. There you go. And then we'll close all this stuff back up back here. And voila, page five and page six are done. Page seven has really fun things with it. We have our page flaps, which will um, be able to hold a photo mat and also our recipe card holder. Now the recipe card holder is an expanded option that we're going to do and it's based on the pocket that I did in six in page six but it has the photo quarters on all four sides so your photo uh, your photo or recipe card however you want to do it but the recipe cards that's what it's meant for it can be popped in and out and it will hold it in there very securely so this is another option to do okay so you will need two page flaps that are two by eight and three quarters two that are eight and three quarters by seven. Boy, I am getting tired. <laughs> so you need those. We're gonna put them in our scoreboard and this one we're gonna score at one half 
and at 5 8 so this has a 1 8 inch gusset all right so you need two of those so we're going to start by adding the flap on the left side of our page so we are going to fold and burnish and we're going to miter our half inch tab now if you want to expand this to a quarter inch gusset you can you just need to make the width of this page seven and an eighth to keep the dimensions of the page otherwise the recipe card holders won't fit okay so that was just a little a little hint there so we're going to miter our half inch tabs but not the eighth inch gusset okay you want to keep that intact straight Okay, and we're just going to glue this to the left side of our page. Okay. And that's going to go right to the score line here, to the quarter inch give space that we have. Okay. Open that up. Make sure it's burnished down. Okay, the left side is done. Now, we're going to go ahead, and this one is also a ribbon closure page. So we're going to find the center, and we're gonna add our ribbon to this. So, right about, so my center, and this is four and three eighths on each end. I'm gonna add my score tape. And again, I got two feet, so a foot, um, two one foot pieces of my red gingham ribbon. And in the collection, you got two yards, so you have plenty to do all the, the closures on the inside of the book with this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a ribbon here, okay? That's the next thing we're gonna do. So we're just gonna line this up so that we can kind of see where the ribbon's gonna go. And the ribbon's gonna come out this direction, okay? So we're just gonna lay that down, just make sure that it's nice and you know straight, that we got it right, okay? So we're gonna do that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this other flat page, let me get this out of the way, and we're going to fold and burnish and miter again. And then we'll add this right on top of the right side, right over the ribbon. This album is actually very easy to put together, but there's just lots of pieces because I did every page different. Tried a couple new ideas. I got really excited when I saw these papers and the kit and everything. It's like I really wanted a big, nice, I'm going to turn around so I can see better, you know, like a family heirloom kind of thing and something that, you know, maybe my grandkids can fight over later <laughs> there you go all right but hopefully not for much later much later all right so making sure that's burnished down okay so now we have our closure so our ribbon will come around and it will tie right there, okay, for our closure. All right, so then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our pockets. Okay, so I'm going to put this to the side, make our base pocket. So our base pocket's nine and three quarters by five. One, oh, I should put it that way so you can read it. One, and, one at nine and three quarters by five. And we're going to do the same thing we've been doing. We're going to score it half on each end, and then we're half in the middle, or half in the middle, half down the um, one long side. And then we're gonna miter and fold and do all that stuff that we do. Okay. 
All right, like this. Okay, grab our book. And this is gonna go on the inside, right at the bottom. So again, just double check and make sure we're in between the scores. All right, and looks like we're gonna be golden here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it and go ahead and glue this down. Okay, just inside of the score line, there we go, glue that down, and it will go clear to the scores, alright, where's my thing, here, okay, and then all that's left is covering with pattern paper and things like that. But we got to make our recipe cards holder holders first. So my um, thought with this was that I'm going to, I have these white photo mats that are going to go up at the top. And then we're going to have the recipe card holder down here. So we're not going to put pattern paper on the insides on the flaps here. I'm going to have pattern paper on the outsides here and then we'll have a photo mat recipe card holder photo mat recipe card holder and then this will be there's a, a photo mat here with some pattern paper and stuff so I'll go through that in the final review but that's what we're gonna do so let's make the recipe card holders let me show you this so this is what I'm talking about if we get a recipe card this will tuck right in here so and this is gonna be glued right to here so then that's why you don't need pattern paper and then the photo mat will sit right on top like that okay so let's make this and i'll show you how easy it is it's super easy to do so you're going to need two of these that are seven and three quarters by five and three quarters and i am using the red cherry paper that came in the craftology box so there was one piece of that I'm using that so we're, what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to grab our scoreboard and in the scoreboard we're going to just go around and we're going to score at three quarters all the way around so at three quarters of an inch okay all the way around okay and then what you're going to do is put it back in your scoreboard and with the seven and three quarters at the top, you're going to do some two more scores. Just like we did with that other pocket, we're going to just go down to the score line. We're going to score at one and a half inches down to that first score line and at six and a quarter down to that score line. Okay, so you'll end up with two three quarter inch squares on each side at the top and then turn it completely over so you have the other end up just like that and do the same thing so one and one half inch to the score and six and a quarter to the score so again two three quarter inch squares and a long rectangle here okay and then we just have to do some cutting and this is it looks complicated but it's really not so what we're going to do is we're going to make tabs for all four of these corners. So we're going to just cut a tab here and then cut this tab here like that. Okay. So you have your, your kind of triangle tab shape in both corners. And then we're just going to cut this piece out. Okay, this is the short side. We're going to do both of them the same. Okay, so you, now you have two tabs and nothing here. Turn it over and do the same thing. So we're going to make our tab.
Okay, and then cut the side out. Okay, so that part's done. Now you have the top and the bottom that have the extra scores. So we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go from that corner score right across that square to the score and we're gonna cut that diagonal. We're gonna go from the corner to the corner score, cut that diagonal, and then we're gonna cut this piece out. I'm just moving it so I can see it. The light's shining on me. Now the other thing that I should tell you while I'm doing the rest of this is that I scored this on the wrong side of the My Colors paper. So the My Colors paper has a smooth side and it has a textured side. I scored it on the text or, or on the smooth side because I felt like it. <laughs> How's that? Um, the tabs for the smooth side will fold to the front. The little triangles will fold to the front like so. You'll have the textured in the middle and then you'll have the smooth photo corners because that's the way I wanted to do it. So if you want it the reverse, just know to score it the other direction, okay? But these will just all fold around just like we did with the other pocket. So then you just fold those little triangles up, okay? And then fold the tabs to the back and then you're done. So then you end up with these four little built-in photo corners that you can use. Now, I know this is a little fiddly. You could use regular photo corners and then just put them on there. You could, you know, make your own photo corners. I just, I don't know, I thought this was kind of a cool idea. And depending on, you could make this as big as you want. You just have to, you know, score whatever size you want. So anyway, that's it. So then you just take and turn it over and glue those down. Like that. And then those are going to glue on the page. So you just need two of those. All right, get that out of the way. There we go. And then check around just to make sure everything's nice and square because we did cut that out. If there's anything that you need to trim up, I think the rest of it looks good. So then you're just gonna take on both of the inside flaps. So. I did it so that there's one photo mat here and then there's a recipe card holder down here and then I'm going to do this one so that this one is at the top okay and then the photo mat will be down here all right so you just glue them down that's all that whoop, if I <laughs> can catch it that's all there is to that all right and then the rest of it is just a matter of just matting as you please on the front and the pockets and everything so come on now Michelle all right just like that used a lot of glue there okay so that's it so I'm just gluing those down, and then this is going to hold my recipe card. Okay. Just, let's see, I didn't glue that one down yet, but now you can see. Then you can pop them in, and you can pop it out, and there you go. So, photo mat here, and then uh, we'll have a photo mat here, some pattern paper here, photo mat, or uh, pattern paper back there, and then this will close that there for now so this will close and tie with a pretty ribbon right there okay so the papers that I chose for this 
just so you can see that real quick. I'm going to put this paper here. And I'm going to put this paper on this page here. So that's what it's going to look like, you know, kind of when it's closed. You can kind of get the idea of what I was thinking. And then this yellow, I used a piece of yellow that's going to go in the pocket here. So there you go. So that's what that page is going to eventually look like. And again, we are going to have lots of pictures and walk through and everything. So that is page seven. And I probably shouldn't have put all that in there because I gotta work on page eight. So let's do that and I'll get page eight and I'll be right back. All right, page eight has a, an accordion pocket and a flap that goes over it to close it. So this one's pretty simple. You all have seen accordion pockets before with flaps, so we're gonna do that. And um, first thing you're gonna need is a piece that's 11 and three quarters by seven and a half. That's gonna be your pocket. And then you're gonna need the flap that's gonna create the closure as eight and three quarters by four and three quarters. So we're going to grab our scoreboard. Let's work on the flap here real quick. So the flap again, is eight and three quarters by four and three quarters. We're going to put it in our scoreboard, score it at half and at one quarter. And then before I forget, because I really want to do this, I'm going to round my corners on my flap. Okay, so I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna just set this to the side for a second and I'm gonna grab my accordion pocket. And again, this is 11 and three quarters by seven and a half. And we're gonna put it in our scoreboard. So you start at the seven and a half and score it down all the way at one half and then turn it to the side. We're going to score at half, at one, and at one and a half, and then turn it around to the other side and do the same thing. So you're gonna score it half, at one, at one and a half and take this out and we're going to do a little cutting and mitering so we're going to do our pocket here so i'm just going to miter those real quick like that and then we're going to miter the bottom like so okay like that and then what you're going to do is turn it over and we're going to start by folding it in and then fold it out and then fold it back in again. So that's going to create the tab that you need to attach it to your page. And you can kind of, if it sticks out a little bit, you can nudge it in. That's the beauty of paper. You can kind of make it do whatever you want it to do. And then, so again, same thing. You're gonna fold it in towards the inside and then you're gonna fold out. And then you're gonna fold back in again. And I'm gonna nudge it because, there we go. All right, so we got that. And then open it up and then fold your bottom up like that. Then what I like to do is fold it in, put a little dab of glue here and fold it up. Okay, create the bottom of your pocket. Then grab a clip. You can do that while you work on the other side. So fold your accordion side in. A little dab of glue. You don't need much right now. Just enough to get those corners tacked down. Okay, and do that. Let's let that sit for a minute because I really want to make sure that that sets. Grab your flap. We'll go ahead and fold and burnish this. Okay. Very nice. 
Um, now, you can do all kinds of things with this. You could use your envelope punch board and do a little deal here, um, which I think I might do. So let's do that because um, it's not too late. We can totally do that. So grab your envelope punch board. And what I'm going to do, gonna put it in here, and I'm going to, let's see, do I want to do it there? Yeah, I'm going to line it up at the two inch mark, okay? Let me make sure that's what I did because I just, oh, yes I did. Okay, two inches. So I'm putting my piece in here, I'm lining it up at the two inch mark, and I'm just going to punch a piece. And then I'm going to turn it around, I'm going to put it in there, I'm going to line it up at two inches, and punch it. Okay. Then I'm going to grab my mat and my ruler and my knife and we're going to cut that middle piece right here out. So I'm just going to line this up and then just cut it off. like that okay easy peasy so then when you take your pattern paper to cover it let's do that really super so I'm doing it just between like the two and the two and the seven eighths and repunching it if you want to get a little bit more yeah definitive black there so that worked out better so I just nudged it just a little bit in between the seven eighths and the two. The two, yeah, you know what I mean. So we're gonna do that and then we're gonna cut that out again, just like we did. Of course I put my weapon away. <laughs> and go like this and like that. And cut that out. And there you go. So that will cover that nicely. And as a matter of fact, we can go ahead and do that. This should be set enough to where we can. So we'll just take our pattern paper and that should line up really nice. You guys, I screwed up and I totally didn't put the magnet on my page. So I'm gonna have to figure out where I want my magnet to close this pocket and put it behind the pocket so that I can use it. So I am, I'm gonna just kind of dry fit this right now because I can't really glue it down till I get this figured out. So now you get to see me try and figure out how to fix my mess. So I'm just gonna stick this on here and I mean, I know, I know that there has to be people out there who have done this before, <laughs> who have been like, oh, I was going to put a magnet on there. Now what am I going to do? Okay. So I'm just trying to fit this and figure out where I'm going to put this magnet. Okay. So this, this flap will go here and I'm going to just take a pencil. I'm going to do a little teeny bit of a line. I'm just going to do this for now. Okay. And draw where the edge of that's going to be. So I know where my magnet space is. Does that make sense? Where I can put my magnet. So I can put it in anywhere between this pencil mark here and here. So I'm going to take one piece. And I'm going to put the sticky back there. So I'm going to take this off now that I know where I can place it. And I am going to go roughly in the middle. It doesn't really matter a whole lot, but I can go down to about here. So I can do it probably right here, right in the middle, okay? So that looks pretty good. It looks like it's right in the middle. My thumb's right on it, right here, okay? And you can check it by doing that. So we're good. All right, now, because of where the adhesive is now, I'm gonna have to do this because this, I'm gonna have to stick it to my flap. All right, so we've got our magnet. Now, the next thing I need to do so that this stays where it's supposed to is 
create a little piece and just glue over top of it. So I'm just going to grab a piece of spare cardstock. And I'm just going to glue that right here. Nobody is ever going to know that was there. And it's going to fix my problem of having my magnet. Now, I could have probably figured out a ribbon tie, but um, I really wanted a magnet on this one. And I don't have any more of the red gingham because I've used it all. So there you go. Um, so there you go. All right. So I'm just going to take this spare piece of cardstock and I'm going to glue that over top. And this is how you fix this boo-boo here. Now you can go straight to the edge if you want. Doesn't really matter. I'm just going to go right over the magnet and glue this down. We'll just call it a reinforcement. <laughs> That's it. We are just going to call it a reinforcement. There we go. Like that. Okay, so now we can glue it to our page. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Okay, there we go. So nobody's ever gonna know that's there. Nobody is ever gonna know. So it'll be fine. It will be fine. So that's how you fix one of those boo-boos, if you can, if you're at this point where you can. Uh, okay, so glue on the pocket. And right before the score on the spine, top and bottom should, whoop, should line up perfect. There we go. Just awesome. Okay, so crisis Only left over. off. I fixed my boo-boo. I put the magnet behind the pocket so it's uh, kind of inside the pocket and it's covered with a piece of cardstock. So ideally, you want to put the magnet under the pattern paper on top of the pocket, okay? We know that. I messed up, and that's how you can fix that boo-boo. So got my flap here, my closure flap. I'm going to go ahead and glue that on. And then we're going to set the magnet to the closure. So I'm just going, this is going to go all the way top to the bottom. Like so. And you know what? I'm going to open that for a second. So I have a flat surface. I'm not dealing with the gusset. There we go. All right. All right, so there's that. Go ahead and take that score tape off because I had to come up with a sticky to add it. And then I'm just gonna set that. It should work perfect, and it does. So here you go, we have our magnet. So I'm gonna just take this off and add some more score tape, and then that should work out just perfect. We got a big gusseted pocket. So. My idea with the gusseted pocket was that um, if you had clippings that you wanted to save um, from magazines or newspapers or something like that, you totally had a huge pocket that you could do that with. Okay, so there's that. So if we close this up, then this is page seven, and this is going to tie in a bow here, and then we turn it over and we've got our big pocket on page eight. So basically our pockets or our pages are done. So let's do this. Let's grab our book. And we have all of our pages. Now they're not complete because I still have to, you know, put the um you know papers on and stuff but this is how our book is going to look so i've got all the pages in the order putting the pages in the book 
So what we're gonna do is everything's a half inch gusset. So we're going to grab the ruler and we're going to just mark a line so that we know where to start. Light pencil line here. And making sure that we've got the orientation right. So I put my pages in and they're not upside down because that would make me hysterical and cry. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna fold so that I have my half inch pieces and I'm going to put the glue on. And I should have taken these out. So let's do that real quick. And I'm just going to line this up. And there is about an eighth of an inch from top to bottom. Okay. And just push that down. Okay, open it up. Make sure it's nice and burnished down. And then repeat. So each page is going to just butt up against the next one here for the next couple pages. So we'll put glue on the pockets. Okay. Next page. up okay now I'm going to turn it to the side so I can see it here all right our pages look really good okay so last page the last page I'm going to do my patented put the tab over top of this tab that we just laid down so that way I don't see a tab edge on the other side of this page so I'm just going to put the glue on Here, and I'm going to lay it down just to the score line of the and right on top of the tab we just put down like so and voila our book is in our pages are created. Ugh. Okay, so we have our pages. All right, I think this is looking good. First thing we're gonna do with the inside cover is we have to cover it with pattern paper. So I already have it prepared and I'm going with this beautiful yellow checked paper that I'm going to put right on the inside here. So let's go ahead and glue that down. because the portfolio um, piece that we're gonna put in here is gonna set right on top of it. So. <clears throat> okay. So we'll just set that down. Right. And I did cut this. I should probably tell you how much, how I cut it, but I cut it at nine by eight and three quarters to cover the inside of this. 
Okay. There we go. Make sure that's down really well. Okay. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to set this aside and then we're going to work on our portfolio. To make your inside front cover uh, portfolio, you're going to need three pieces. So A is seven by 12. You need one of those. You need um, pieces B. There's two of these that are eight by five and a quarter. And then you're going to need piece C that's four and a half by seven. You just need one of those. So the pieces C and B are scored the same. So the four and a half by seven piece and the two eight by five and a quarter, you're just gonna put them in your scoreboard and both, all of them are the same. You're going to score at one half and at one quarter. I mean, three quarters, okay? So one half and three quarters. So that'll give you a quarter inch gusset. So all three of those pieces, B and C, you'll do you're that. You're take way. piece A, put the 12 at the top, and you're gonna score at three and three quarters and four. All right. So then we're going to, you know, fold and burnish all of our things. And this is going to be a fairly nice little um, portfolio kind of thing. Um, we'll hold quite a bit clippings, recipe cards, photos, whatever you want. Okay. And then the other thing too is that I really liked it on my my um, prototype project, and I rounded the corners of these pages. So we're going to do that as well. You don't have to if you don't want to. And then you're also going to need um, again two one foot lengths of ribbon for closure. Okay, so we have our pieces. So take this base piece A and open it up. All of these pieces are basically going to attach to this. So we're gonna take the bottom piece C, which is four and a half by seven. We've already scored and burnished and everything. We're gonna go ahead and miter. And we're going to round our corners. And then we're going to add it to the bottom. I'm going to throw my glue because I do that a lot. All right. I'm getting excited because it's almost done. And then I get to put all the pattern papers on and then watch this thing come to life. And it's going to be amazing. <laughs> it's going to be amazing. I don't know how any project... And after I said all that, I didn't round this. But I don't know how any project using this paper is not going to be amazing because it's just gorgeous. Okay, so top and bottom of the flaps. And then these are going to be the sides. So again, let's go ahead and round our corners. And do it for both of them because we might as well get it done while I'm thinking about it. Okay. And then we're going to add these to the sides. Okay. Oh, I didn't minor the corners. Real quick, before the glue sets. There we go. <laughs> Crisis averted. <laughs> okay next one let's go ahead and miter those corners first before we glue it down because that would be the smart thing to do right okay that would be the smart thing to do so again gluing on the one half inch. And I'm going to turn it so I can see. 
These are going to be the outer covers of this portfolio. Okay. There we go. Okay. So this will fold like that, and then they'll fold like this. So then um, to close it, we're going to go ahead and put... Like we did the other piece that we did this, we're gonna put a piece here. Now you can close it any way. You could close it this way too if you wanted to. It doesn't matter whichever way you want it to open. Actually, let's do it the opposite because we already did it the other way. Because it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. This is your book, right? This is your book. I'm gonna do it this way. All right, so I'm going to center, and this is eight tall, so there we go, right about here. I'm gonna put a piece of ribbon and then what I'm gonna do is try and line it up so I can see when I'm whoops on my grid here and I'm gonna just put this you know like right there okay and then on the back we're gonna go ahead and put it on the back so it'll wrap around the front okay so if we use our grid to help us line this up, then that means that will go about here. And this one will go here. And we're good to go. So then this will go around the front and we can tie our bow here to close it. Okay, just like that. So. I am going to be using these papers to cover that, which are absolutely gorgeous. And all we have to do basically is put this in the book and then we can put the pattern papers on it um, later. And I'll show you that through the in the um, final walkthrough. So let's go ahead and just tie this. Actually, I keep saying final walkthrough. Um, I might do a walkthrough before the tutorial so you can see what you're actually going to be making. That'd be kind of cool thing to do instead of the final walkthrough maybe I will do a preview walkthrough yeah maybe I'll do that okay this guy just gets glued right in the middle here so I'm gonna turn it to the side so I can see it a little bit easier and we're just going to add glue Okay. Hmm. Okay, I'm just eyeballing it, but there we go. That looks really good to me. Now you can open it up <clears throat> and you can push it down from the inside. Okay, then just go around, make sure that everything is adhered down on the edges. Okay. There you go. Now all you have to do is cover that with pattern paper and then you're good to go. Okay, so I'm just going to stick these on the inside for now. And, well, maybe I won't paper clips are oh, let me a little. there we go okay so this part is done so we've got our portfolio on the front and that's going to hold a ton of recipes or clippings or pictures or whatever okay Now the back pocket, this is the last thing we have to make um, before I stop and put everything together and um, get all the papers on. So we're going to do another accordion pocket on the back of this. So let me get the stuff. I'll be right back. Okay, the first thing we have to do is cover this with pattern paper again. So um, again, I went, <clears throat> I'm trying to go for symmetry in this project and 
Um, so I'm using this beautiful yellow gingham paper. The accordion pocket will sit on top of this. And I have a couple of ideas that I'll just show you what I was thinking. So you can do um, whatever you want with that. I didn't really include these ideas in the cut list, but um, you know, they're kind of like bonus ideas for making this project so you can do whatever you want i made a couple and have a couple ideas so there we go so that's covered so let's put this off to the side for just a second oh i love this book okay <laughs> so your accordion pocket for the inside back cover you need one that's 11 by five and a half and we're going to do the usual accordion pocket thing so we're going to put it long ways so the 11 at the top, and we're going to score at half, at whoop, at one, and one and a half. And then we're going to do nine and a half, ten, and ten and a half, okay? So basically one, half, one, and one and a half on each side. And then turn it on one side on the five and a half, score at a half. And then miter and fold again so same concept as we just did this one is not going to have a closure flap so it'll be just a freestanding nice pocket that's going to hold a lot of stuff so um i had a couple ideas here so if you wanted you know more clippings um whatever you want um but i had a couple ideas that i thought were kind of cool and I had some extra paper left over after I did this because I pretty much have wiped out this collection in the Craftology box, that's for sure. I have pretty much wiped it out. Um, but I had extra paper, so I had an idea. There we go. Um, let's nudge that in just a little bit. Good gravy. Okay. Okay, and then we'll do this. So another dab of glue in the corners and we'll get a clip. I didn't give myself a lot of room to glue that one. Okay. And again, a little dab of glue. Okay. This is going to be cool. Okay. All right. So we're going to grab our book and you're just going to go ahead and put it down here at the bottom. You're just going to glue it in there. Okay. So let's do that. we go just center it I'm eyeballing it having a little bit of the pattern paper show from the bottom so about an eighth of an inch of pattern paper showing at the bottom and then center it side to side okay and there's your pocket I did not do anything you know fancy with this one which is fine and basically we're gonna finish it by using our lovely ladies that's going to match the papers that I'm gonna do on the front cover piece so we'll go ahead and just put that on there since it is just one piece to finish this. And um, let me show you the other ideas that I had really quick. Put that down. Oh, this paper is so pretty. It's so pretty. I love it. I love the colors love the colors okay 
So our lovely ladies are there. Our pocket is complete. So you have lots and lots and lots of room to put stuff. So let's talk about stuff to put in your pocket. So recipes, clippings, all that stuff is good. But then I had another idea. First off, I thought, well, you can make your own notebook. And I made a notebook out of a piece of eight by 12 paper. And I took the cardstock and then I folded it in half. And I got some uh, just plain old, you know, copy paper and put it in there, tied it with a pamphlet stitch. And um, this is my kind of demo piece. But then I just added some pattern paper and made pockets for recipe cards. And then you could have this little notebook. So I thought, well, that's an idea. It's not in your cut list, but if you wanted to, um, that's what I used. So and then I just um, took the, the copy paper and trimmed it down and made a little notebook. You could sew it, you could staple it, however you want to do it. So that's one idea. Then the other idea I thought, well, if you had a purchase notebook that would work like this, which I had in my stash, this totally would fit in the pocket. And then you could have this notebook in there as well. Um, if you have a notebook that has a plain cover, you could use pattern paper and, um, you know, with this collection and you could totally decorate it up. And then I had another idea. So this is my last idea. So my last idea was um, a lot of times when I'm looking at a recipe um, book, I, you know, most of the time I don't have something in the recipes that I want to make that I need to go to the store for. So I thought maybe I should make a shopping list for this particular book. So I did. I had some extra pattern paper and um, I went to town. Now this, I am going to use this in, in the decoration, but there was a, a real pretty glittery gray. And now I can't remember what the name of that one was either. And I have it in my notes somewhere. Um, it's a silver and it's the my um, colors and it's really shimmery. So what I did was I took and through my Cricut Joy, cut out the word shopping list. I put it on this um, cut out that I cut out, fussy cut out, and then I backed it with black cardstock, okay? Put it on a piece of um, cardstock that I covered with patterned paper. So in my stash, you know these um, these binder kind of, you know, like medical file binder um, clips? I had a bazillion of them. So I was like, okay, I could use that. So what I did was I started with a base. This base is um, lightweight chipboard that I just covered with black cardstock. And then I put a piece of pattern paper on the back. And this measures uh, four and three quarters by eight. And so I covered it front and back. You can see that I covered it front and back. And so it gives, gives me a nice hard base. And then I took my pattern paper and or my um, extra piece of cardstock and covered the top only with pattern paper and then I took some copy paper and cut those. So those pages measure, and I never get my ruler right the first time, um, seven and a half by four and a quarter. So I just, I line those up on my board and I used my heavy duty hole punch and punched holes and then set them with this binder thing. And so my thoughts were, is that when I'm done using this shopping list, when I, when I fill it all out or use all the pages, then I can totally replace the pages. And all I have to do is cut more paper at four and a quarter by, what did I say? Um, seven and a half. And I've got another shopping list and it's really nice to take out. You could throw it in your purse. It's heavy weight on the back. So it's really nice for writing, but I just thought it was a really cool little addition to this book. So this could set in your pocket back here, you know, no problem. And then you have a shopping list handy with you, or you can just, you know, take it out and use it, whatever. But then you can also, you can also have, you know, like a little, you know, notebook in here if you wanted to, um, you know, the choice is yours. So um, that's kind of what I was thinking with this. You could also put one of these in the portfolio up front too, whatever you wanted to do. But anyway, so that's the tutorial on how to make the book. I hope it all made sense. Thank you for putting up with my, um, my uh, stuff and I hope you learned um, some stuff and uh, learned how to fix some stuff. <laughs> and and um, 
again, this was um, quite a privilege. I have not done a craftology box yet, so I was pretty excited when I got the chance to do this, and I, I really wanted to do a nice job. But this book will be huge, and it will be awesome, and it will be lovely when I get all the papers done. I can't wait to show it to you. I mean, it's going to be awesome. So maybe I'll do a, a, a preview, and then we'll go into making it. So you'll have a better idea of what... I was envisioning. But anyway, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and I appreciate everything and all your support. Stay crafty, everybody. Bye-bye.